I'm Brooks Agnew, coming to you from live from an undisclosed location east of the Appalachian Mountains. You're here with me, but I call this section Working in the Blind, the Secret World of Hillary Clinton. The New York Times reported on Monday that Clinton exclusively, not as a backup, exclusively used a private email account and server for her email during her four years as Secretary of State. Uh, skirting federal records laws. And I'm going to get into that exactly. You've heard it on the news, but you haven't heard it on the news. By the way, on September 16th, 2012, five days after it occurred, we broke the story right here on X Squared Radio, and only now are they catching up with what we revealed then. Anyway, records sufficient to show the number of email accounts of or associated with Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton and the extent to which those email accounts are identifiable as those of or associated with Secretary Clinton. Anyway, Cruz's request came on the heels of news that former EPA administrator, Lisa Jackson, <clears throat> she had also used an alias email account to conduct government business, except uh, she was fired for it. This is why they went after the emails, because they found out that she had a separate email account. However, however, the news that the email account was on a server which was purchased, was owned, was operated, was powered up, and was located inside the home of Mrs. Hillary Rodham Clinton, that was a surprise. That was a surprise. Three more Inspector General reports made reference to personal email used since 2013 after Clinton left the State Department. Also, the embassy in Dili, East Timur. Uh, personal email folders were mostly used at the embassy in Singapore, the embassy in Madrid, the embassy in Lisbon, in Portugal. So it goes on and on and on. It isn't just here. Everywhere, everywhere, S uh, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton operated. She kept the records away. And <clears throat> many of those records have still not been recovered. Now, you've heard the uh, spokespeople, the spear catchers out there on the Sunday programs saying that Hillary committed no wrong. Everybody knew about these email addresses. She was totally transparent. Everyone knows about the email addresses. There are thousands and thousands of people that got these emails. And the email addresses are known, and therefore she did not violate the law. Well, I hate to tell you, but that's wrong. Because I happen to have the law right here. The email address has nothing to do with it. In fact, the fact that the email was sent should be retained in the sent file, of course, along with any uh, attachments. But the emails that are received, the ones that are received with, say, signed documents or evidence or account information, those attachments belong to us. They belong to the American people. However, they only exist in one place. And that's in the private email folders. Now, <clears throat> you've heard of the Federal Records Act. Well, that's the main law. Now, let's talk about the regulations that support that law. Let's talk first about Title 44, USC Chapter 31, Section 3106. Here is what it says. In any case in which the head of the federal agency, uh, by the way, just to throw in parenthetically, the U.S. State Department is a federal agency. Okay? You got that? And uh, the Secretary of State is actually the head of that federal agency. 
So let's start again. In any case in which the head of the federal agency does not initiate an action for such recovery or other redress within a reasonable period of time after being notified of any such unlawful action described in subsection A, or is participating in or believed to be participating in any such unlawful action, the archivist shall request the attorney general to initiate such an action and shall notify the Congress when such a request has been made. We're specifically referring to not storing properly federal records. It's subsection B of this that I need you to pay close attention to. Now, uh, there are two titles that pertain to this. One is Title 44, which is the Federal Records Act. The other is Title 18. And it, I want you to pay particular attention to this subsection B. Title 18, USC, Section 2071. It contains a similar prohibition specifically directed at custodians of public records, which Hillary Rodham Clinton made herself when she purchased and powered up and housed her own server on which the public's documents exist. She became the custodian. All right. Any custodian of a public record who, and this is in bold print and I have it in quotation marks, any custodian of a public record who willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, falsifies, or destroys any record shall be fined not more than $2,000 or imprisoned not more than three years or both. And here's the key. And shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. While the range of acts proscribed by this section is somewhat narrower than subsection A, it does provide the additional penalty of forfeiture of position within the United States. Uh, By the way, this would include president. Now, Title 18 also has a section 1519. It says, whoever knowingly alters, destroys, mutilates, conceals, covers up, falsifies, or makes a false entry in any record, document, or tangible object with the intent to impede, obstruct, or influence the investigation or proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction of any department or agency of the United States or any case filed under Title 11 or in relation to or contemplation of any such matter or case shall be fined under this title, imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. They're serious This is the law. So if you want to know, 18 U.S. Code 2071, there are two areas to it, just so you know what the definition is. Whoever willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, or destroys, or attempts to do so, or with the intent to do so, takes and carries away any record, proceeding, map, book, paper, document, or other thing filed or deposited with any clerk or officer of any court in the United States or in any public office, any public office, or with any judicial or public officer of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. There are three-year penalties. There are five-year penalties. There are 20 year penalties. Hillary Clinton has admitted her premeditated guilt by setting up the off the books email accounts for her and her staff. And she has aggravated the charge by owning and maintaining the only server in the world that retains these records in her private residence. 
she is disqualified by law from holding any public office. So there you go. By the way, there's been strong talk and we have talked about it on this, on this uh, program here about, um, Barack Hussein Obama issuing an executive order. There's already been two bills introduced on the House floor. They have not been argued out sufficiently to re- repeal or set aside the 22nd Amendment, allowing Barack Hussein Obama to run for a third term. There is an effective argument. If Hillary Clinton is convicted where she is disqualified for running for president because she owned and housed and operated the only server on the planet that held the public's documents. This is a violation of federal law. It's subject up to 20 years in prison and a disqualification from, from running for or holding any public office, including president, especially president. <clears throat> if Hillary is brought down or sent to the bunker permanently to live off the $2 billion her family foundation has raised illegally from foreign countries as a conflict of interest while she was Secretary of State. Then there will be no effective Democrat to run in place. Elizabeth Warren, unqualified. O'Malley, unqualified. Any other Democrat that they would want to run would be unqualified to run for president, could not withstand even the weakest of the Republican challengers. In that case, Barack Obama will see it as a public duty. His narcissism will allow him to do nothing else. He will run for a third term. And keep in mind, the recent poll, only 43% of the people uh, approve of the job that he's doing. He won with 43% of the vote. He will win again because the Republicans will continue to eat their own young. They think that their primary procedure, their primary process produces the best candidate. What it does is they go into the ring all with sharp knives And they cut each other for months and months and months on public TV. Each week they come back for another debate with new band-aids, new stitches, missing fingers, hobbling, leaning on a crutch. And by the end of the process, even the best of them is so damaged, no one will vote for him. We're doing that process again. We have not selected a candidate I would say there'll be 12 to 16 candidates this time because they feel they're going to run against a scattered and weakened Democrat party, but not if Barack Obama decides to run again. You heard it. I said it. It's in the archives. You can check it in a year to see if I'm right or not. With all due respect, people have uh, accused us of you know, misleading Americans. I can say I would recommend highly. It is our job to do everything we can to kill some Americans. They attacked, they killed our people. There are questions being raised. Now, was information developing, understanding what was going on? Would we reach conclusions later that weren't reached initially? Because even today... What difference at this point does it make? The fact is, it is our job to kill some Americans. With all due respect. I am Obama, a born. Resistance is futile. Your life as it has been is over. From this time forward, you will service us.